Hey gang, welcome to another episode of Collection Expansion Extravaganza right here on ToyWorldOrder.com. Starring me, Duvall, and my wife, Carrie Duvall. Hello. I almost called you Puppet Duvall. That would have been really awkward and weird. You wish you were doing these with him. Not really. You've spent time with that guy. He's insane. I can be... Mima moo ba ba ba. Mima moo ba ba ba. Fire hair. Mima moo ba. I can be that's a puppet. A, that's a good impression. Actually, that's really well done. Uh, again, of course, this show is all about the stuff that Carrie and I find at flea markets, garage sales, antique stores, auctions, estate sales, and so much more. Uh, and we are always happy to show you kind of what we find in the hunt. So uh, why don't we start off with uh, what you got over here? You got a bunch of cute stuff. Mm, I got, you got, you got. You got some cute stuff where here. Where should I start? I don't know. This thing? Oh, uh, this thing's cool. And actually, this thing carries it's, as so much as it's mine. We were at uh, a flea market and... This guy was on the table in a bag, like in his own little bag, and he looked in really good condition. The lady was like, he works. And I'm thinking, she had no prices on any of her stuff. And I'm thinking, well, how much does she want? I asked her, just out of curiosity, because I thought it looked cool. And she's like, 10 bucks. And I'm like, we're buying him. Just because he's from 71. And pull a string. Let it go. He still works beautifully. Tail's about ready to fall off. He does have some issues. His tail's kind of coming his, off. His, don't touch his bow. Yeah, his, his, bow, is his, like his just... bow is really just like hanging on literally by a thread. But his ears are still here. His ears are usually the thing that are gone. He talks still. He still. I mean, he's in pretty decent shape yeah. for, for as old as he is. So yeah. um, he was something I was like, we, we need to buy him because I don't. He's too darn cool to just leave and let someone else buy. So. Not a lot of pull string stuff I buy works, and this one for what he was. Gotta be worked. gentle. With yeah, you gotta be very gentle. Legs too are just kind of hanging on. I know. We'll just set him right there. There we go. You got some Disney stuff. Uh, now this this Donald here uh, was a uh, he actually you could put candy in him. Little gumballs and stuff would fit in here, and the little uh, his little baton would go over the and you, when you wanted the gumball. His what? I said his baton. His baton. When you lower his baton over the drum, you uh, raise the baton, you get the gumbo. Uh, hee hee ho, oh, uh, gumbo. Uh, hee hee. Uh, these were, uh, you could buy these in stores. Um, this would have been 90 or 86, actually. Yeah, 86 is when this came out from Superior Toy uh, Limited, I believe. And they did a lot of these different little gumball carriers. So those cute little gumball, gumball thing there. And that Donald, I'm not sure what he's from. I want to say he's from. Um, Looks like he's. He's from Something. the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse characters. Like, you could put him on the playset because he's got a little button, and when you press the button, his head, I believe his arms move or yeah, something. So, yeah, Yeah. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. When you put him on the playset, he would talk. He would move and he would talk. So, I think that's where that Donald came from. But we found him in a that's box of free stuff. Nice, cute. Yeah, he's he kind of cute for what he was. So, um, yeah, oh, here. Here you go. If you press the button, hold on to his feet, press the button. His, his, he, yeah, he kind of dances, dances a little bit, yeah. And then Carrie found a little Kellogg's Bendable Goofy that we didn't have. Of course, you know, Carrie loves Goofy stuff, so anytime we find something we don't have of him, she will buy well, it. Sometimes even if we already have it. She'll buy it just because she's like, I gotta have it. He's cute. He is cute. A little cute Bendable Goofy. And these guys were uh, Hardy's giveaways, I believe, yes. Um, and they came out in 87, 88 maybe. Uh, there were a number of them. We've got three, I think, of the five, but these were little Smurfs on surfboards, and they had little Smurf stickers on them, but Papa Smurf, uh, just a random Smurf and Smurfette in her little bikini, which is pretty cute. Um, these aren't something we had set out to, to, to collect, but we found a bunch of them uh, at a flea market, and we couldn't find all of them, just these three, and they were like a buck a piece, uh, which sometimes is a little bit more than we want to pay for Happy Meal toys, but you don't see these very often, mm. so... We picked them up, but they're pretty cute though. I like the little, uh, like the little surfboards they're on, and they roll. They roll pretty good for what they are. Vroom, we have Voom. Voom. Speaking of Vooms, <laughs> these are awesome. These are from 
Are they all Matchbox, I yep. believe? Yep. Yep, I looked at them. All yep, from all, the same year. All from the same year, Matchbox. 1980. 1980 Matchbox. And these were of Popeye. So we have Bluto on his tractor. Uh, we have Olive Oil in her little, uh, little uh, Deuce Corvette, I think, uh, which is pretty cute. And then we have Popeye in his spinach truck there, which is kind of neat. He's These are really neat, though. I love these little character uh, vehicles from the 80s. They're really, really always nicely done. Uh, and for them being Matchbox from, from the 80s is really cool. Uh, I really do like them though. I think they're really neat. I don't know if there was one more. I like that Bluto's, or not, uh, not a tractor, but Bluto's got a uh, steamroller. It's like a bolt, yeah. Yeah, and the front of his steamroller has a Popeye sticker that rolls on it. It's so like, it looks like mm -hmm. he ran over Popeye, which is kind of cool. <laughs> really neat. I love these little things. Um, we always like to try to find these. Whenever whenever we see something like this we don't have, we, we tend to buy. So, um, my little, uh, Carrie likes them. That's why we bought them. She's like, those are cute. Those are cute. So that's what we well, I just them. love how she's like, so big and her steering wheel's like way down here. Yeah, her steering wheel's like, yeah. Her steering wheel's stupid tiny. So I love those. Those are really neat. We've got some puzzles here, and these are actually uh, just cardboard frame cardboard frame puzzles, but uh, they're pretty cool. As uh, here, we'll take this out of there because you won't be able to because the light's going to reflect off that plastic. These were. Uh, very neat, and I don't have a lot of merchandise from this line, but they were both uh, Dino Rider tray puzzles, uh, depicting some some classic scenes of the uh, the action figure and short-lived cartoon line. There, uh, beautiful puzzles. One of the T-Rex fighting off uh, a couple of uh, Stegosaurus there, and uh, this one of the Raptor and the Brontosaurus. Uh, these are these are really cool. This is a toy line that I have not gone down the rabbit hole and don't plan to anytime soon because they are expensive. Uh, anyone wants to know how expensive, just ask Mr. Dave Draper one time when you see him at a toy show. He'll tell you all about them uh, as he went down this rabbit hole. And not that he regrets it, but they're pricey. So uh, to get them we'll complete... We'll stick with the 25-cent puzzles. We'll stick with the 25-cent puzzles, but very cool. And then the other uh, frame puzzle I found is actually a frame uh, Centurions of Ace McCloud there flying, which is pretty cool. And I love Centurion stuff. Uh, I finally did complete the main three Centurions figures with all their accessories that they came with originally. But uh, it was nice to find... Uh, find this puzzle uh, that's really, I mean, it's it's got a little beat up on the corner, but uh, I love frame puzzles like this. Not, we, we always plan on buying a little frame and actually putting them in the frame, but it still has never happened to this day just because, one, we forget a lot of times, and two, it's like, well, where are we going to put them? Uh, really? They're going to have to start being hung in the hallway upstairs, and that's no. not going to happen. So. No. <laughs> and I love these little frame puzzles because they used to be, when they came, they were sealed in plastic, but they got a little peg hole so they could hang on a peg, which was always a... Uh, Always a neat idea to me that, that they hung on a peg like that one time, which is pretty cool. Uh, I got a couple books here. Uh, the first one is the uh, the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse Scrapbook, uh, which is the official. Uh, uh, it's printed by Grosset and Dunlap, and this would have been this was printed in 1975, and I believe it was the first printing of this. Uh, but it's just a great collection of uh, the Mouseketeers and the Spin and Marty uh, show, and just a lot of great great like uh, production photos there's music in here uh, there's pictures of the uh, Mouseketeers grown yeah, up like, at that yeah, point it's like where are they now yeah it's a yeah it's a where are they now kind of thing um, but uh, like be back behind the scenes pictures of their rehearsals and their school um, it's a really neat book and it, I'm not a big Mickey Mouse Clubhouse fan but uh, when it comes to classic it's not, Disney it's not Mickey Mouse Clubhouse it's or Mickey, Mickey, Mouse, Mouse Club. Mickey Mouse Club yeah I always say Mickey Mouse Clubhouse I do that all the time uh, but uh, anytime I find books like this featuring the history of Disney or something of this nature, I tend to buy it. Henceforth, why these are added to the this one is the there's there's a soft back and a hard back of this book. The hard back of this book is ridiculously, ridiculously expensive and really hard to find. The soft back is a little bit more is a little bit less pricey, but not as hard to find. And this is actually the Muppet Show book. And it is uh it is basically I believe the first season of the Muppet Show and it is uh it is every Muppet Show skit they did in the first season um, in basically storybook form with art to go along with it. So the very first skit they did was the new uh, Gopher, which was Scooter. And Scooter was the nephew of the owner of the Muppet Theater. So, uh, But there's just some great, uh, some great classic sketches in here. Gonzo sketches with Piggy. Uh, and these were all from the very first season, as you can tell, because there's the first... That's how Piggy looked in the first couple of seasons, so a little less defined, but uh, just some some great uh, some great beautiful artwork of the Muppet Show in here, uh, which is pretty darn neat. 
yeah, the uh, the pigs take over where they <laughs> turn Kermit into a pig. So, um, so there's some great stuff. Pigs in Space, the very very classic Pigs in Space. Uh, so, very neat book. But again, this was I think we paid uh, 15 bucks for this, just because we'd never seen it, and uh, I was like, well, when are we ever going to see it again? And then I found out there was a hardback of this same book that is really really pricey. So. That's pretty cool. And this one actually was a uh, art exhibit that traveled in the early 80s. Um, I believe through 80, from 1980 to 1984 maybe? Around the country and around the world. But this is a, a little collector book for the art of Muppets. Which was a behind the scenes look at 25 years of Muppet magic. Uh, and then the back of it says early in summer 1979 a modest exhibit opened in Lincoln Center Library and Museum of the Performing Arts in New York. It was entitled The Art of the Muppets and it gave the public an intriguing look backstage at the Muppets' own private world. The resulting delightful exhibit attracted startling crowds and the attention of the museum community. By Christmas, uh, a much expanded version was on view at the San Diego Museum of Art. What began as a small summer diversion had become a major event, and a three-year tour destined to reach many of America's most prominent museums was soon underway. Uh, which, it's... Uh... It's neat to look at because I was looking through and it shows like what some of the Muppets looked like in the early days. And yes. Like Oscar the Grouch was just creepy. Yeah, yeah, because he was uh, he was brown and um, it's a lot of a lot of behind the scenes of like the the Muppets uh, Muppet creation and uh, like Sam and Friends on display there, which was the 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 origination of, of the Muppets and Jim Henson's work in puppetry on TV. Uh, Sesame Street, uh, the puppets from the uh, SNL sketches they did for a while. The Muppets did SNL sketches for the early years of SNL, um, and then some great displays like. Uh, of what they look like on display, like Sweetums and Robin. So it's just, it's a really gorgeous book. And uh, another book that we'd, we'd never seen before. And it was something I was like, well, we, we should probably buy that because I don't know if we see that again. Uh, and then I got a lunchbox before I hit uh, the few action figures I hear, I got here. This actually, uh, we, we paid eight bucks for it, which wasn't bad, uh, but it was in really nice condition. And I don't see lunchboxes for this very often, but it was the uh, the Golden Girl line, which actually predated uh, She Repents the Power, I believe, by just a few months in stores. Um, but it was, uh, I don't remember, it was loose and it was Galoob toy, so I don't remember if there was a cartoon of Golden Girl, but this, the lunchbox is designed in the style that a cartoon would look, uh, but the fact that it also has its thermos, which is really nice. So uh, I was like, well, for eight bucks, we're going to buy that because that's probably a ridiculous price on lunch. So eight bucks for Golden Girl's lunchbox in bed. Uh, some action figure stuff I've got here. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, couple of figures. I've got another uh, another vintage Don't mind me. another vintage Ninja Turtle. Another Leonardo who was missing his belt, but uh, all the Leos out of this big stuff that we bought from Estate was missing. They were all missing their belts. So uh, I did keep a Leonardo just because I didn't have a vintage Leo, uh, but I, I kept a Leonardo out just because eventually maybe someday I'll. And I learned belt. that. He's got a hard head instead of soft that's head. That's right. That's right. You learned that last episode, didn't that's you? Right. Yeah. I remember. This is the hard head Leo, so I kept Leo. Mm -hmm. Um, a few Masters figures here. Uh, I found Cobra Khan, which I didn't actually have a Cobra Khan. Um, of course, Cobra Khan. Why are all of our animal, all of our toys are covered in enamel? Yeah, they because they're sticky. Because I, I haven't actually cleaned these. Yeah, but they're covered in stuff. I know, I know. For I see carefully. Yeah, I know. But Cobra Khan, of course, you'd fill him, fill his body with water, and then squeeze his head down, and he'd spray water. Um, he had a gun, but he's missing his gun, and that's fine. Um, one day I'll find his gun, but he's got his legs need fixed. They're a little wobbly. He doesn't stand you up. Get very in there well. and you do your rubber band trick. I know, right? Uh, I found Jitsu. With his sword, and he's in really nice condition. His legs are his legs are all right, but his uh, his fist, I love. I was Jitsu was one of the ones. I had Fisto and Jitsu when I was a kid, and they were two of my favorites. I loved these characters, uh, but I like that uh, I found Jitsu, and then I found Jitsu's sword actually uh, in a box of stuff, I believe, at Dealer Dan's house. Uh, when Dave and I went to go uh, do some stuff for Dealer Dan, I just found Jitsu's sword and was like, I need a Jitsu sword, so. Uh, jitsu sword and him that's a complete jitsu that's pretty cool and then i found this is actually the variant uh grizzlor it's a black face uh a darker body grizzlor and this there actually was a variant grizzlor and this is he uh and this was out of the big lot of stuff we bought in the estate sale that was one of the figures that out of that slot that i kept because i was like Ooh, i don't like i you don't hardly ever see this variant grizzlor uh, in the wild or at very rarely at a toy show so um i kept him because uh, i was like meh Kind of hard to get. I've got a regular Grizzlor up there, but uh, I'll keep the variant because he's cool looking. I like the darker look of, of Grizzlor. I think he looks much better. And then to finish out the action figures here, uh, one of them, which is uh, the only Mattel figure I've got from Clash of the Titans, but it is uh, um, it is the, the main character, I believe, Perseus from uh, Clash of the Titans. 
Uh, he came with a shield and a sword, which he doesn't have, and this one's a little beat up, but uh, uh, Dave has a complete run of these, and they're, they're really cool figures, but um, he was in a lot of stuff, like in a bag of stuff we bought at a flea market that I kept, and I was like, eh, I'll keep him just because, because he's neat. <laughs> he's a nice little figure. And then a couple of Black Star figures. This one actually I found, I believe, is the uh, Palace Guard, uh, and I found him... Um, Oh, I don't remember where he... Oh, he came out of the estate sale stuff, too. And I kept him because he... If you if you flip... He's got a little uh, a little flint wheel back here. And when you flip the flint wheel... He sparks. Yeah, he does. How about you not do that? Which, again... Uh, and you can see smoke coming out of him. Uh, That's dangerous. Yeah, they don't make toys like this anymore, people. <laughs> There's a reason for it. Uh, because... Uh, okay, stop. When you do that and smoke's coming out of him... Yeah, it's a little, uh, little dangerous. A little <gasps> dangerous. Uh, but Wait, the excuse me, sir. How did you burn down your house? Well, my action figure had a flint wheel. He just set everything aflame. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then this actually came from my uh, my buddy uh, Don Blanco a long time ago. And this is actually the I believe his name is the Lava Beast from that same line from Black Star. He he's a little different as he's got a sparking thing too. But oh my god, his head his head lights up, <laughs> and he still works. And he's got his uh, he's got his weapon, but he's missing uh, he's missing a little chunk of his ammo belt that went up over his shoulder. But which is kind of funny because the original series of Black Star figures didn't have this feature. These came about the second series. So this figure originally in the line actually looked, his chest looked like this. He had the little missile and the little ammo belt glued to his chest. And then the second series one had the dial. So these are both from the second series of Black Star, which redid pretty much all the figures with the flint wheel and then a bunch of new ones. So uh, pretty cool though. I, I like this line. It's a, it's a neat line and it's, it's hard to find them in good shape and working because they're just, they're very fragile figures. So. Uh, what do we got here? We got a, oh, we got a loop the loop uh, from Ilko. This is one of those items. This unfortunately is not complete. Oh, boo! It is not complete, but it is a neat little display item as it's got Mickey and Donald. I think it's missing part of the track. Um, it's missing the little stands that the track went on. But uh, the basic idea of this is that you would uh, you would put the Mickey vehicle on there, and then he would go up there and he would flop up the elevator. And he would hit Donald, and Donald would wave to him, and it was just it would go around and around and around. And it's a really neat little item, but uh, uh, again, it's it's missing. Uh, I think it's like I said, I think it's missing the the little uh, the, the little stands, but the the figures are still in here, which is what really matters. So that and when I bought this, this was filthy. This Donald, I don't know if Carrie remembers, it, he was disgusting. It didn't even look like Donald. It just looked a big thing of brown. Um, and Magic Eraser cleaned him up, and he looks uh, he's just a really soft rubber uh, Donald with a you know this little the little device on him, so he'll turn and wave when when Mickey hits the little uh, little item. And then we've got the little uh, the little Mickey car actually here, um, and Mickey's pretty much soft rubber. His head turns. Uh, I don't think I ever got this working because it was uh, the inside of it was pretty it was pretty well gone. It's uh, somebody had left the batteries in here and it was really corroded. So I've never taken this apart to try to get the uh, the Mickey car running again. But you know all the all the track and everything's here except for. The little stands for the the track that that held up the elevated track part, but the cardboard pieces here for the loop the loop. So um, it's a neat. Uh, it makes a nice little display with the box. So and that was really why I bought it because it was like I think at auction I paid I ended up paying two bucks for it because nobody bid on it. So and it was in a box full of stuff. So eh, two bucks. And then last but not least, a couple board games here. Uh, one of which is a game called uh, which Carrie and I found at a flea market. Um, Past Bridgeton, Missouri. Sure. Um, there's a large flea market that usually happens. Wentzville. Wentzville. The Wentzville flea market. I found this, and it was one of the few things we don't find a lot of stuff at Wentzville. We've gone several times, and it's it's not a lot of toy stuff there. There is, but it's all either. I like it because it's out all outdoors, and we always pick a really nice day to go. Yes. Yes. I like it. That's uh, the drive there sucks, though. It's well, a long drive, it's a but long drive. Um, it, it, we find some stuff, and I did find Screaming Eagles. Uh, the classic board game from Milton Bradley, which is kind of cool, which uh, which again is one of these games that we'll, we'll eventually play on board. But I love the playing pieces for this game because they're these little jets <laughs> on these little clear stands. Huh. And these were, and they, 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 they tilt, so you can tilt the jets, and I think that plays into the game somehow, but they, they tilt it on their little display stands, which is kind of cool. So um, I, I kind of like it. Uh, it, was a, it was a neat little find. I think the guy wanted like five bucks for it. So I was like, yeah, why not? Uh, it's a game I didn't have, and it was one of the few things that I found at Winsville that I was like, yeah, I kind of want that. 
So I talked to this one and they let me buy it. And then this one actually is, uh, I believe it's missing the rivet. I think I might've found the rivet for it, but uh, we found this at uh, a church sale. Uh, this and a couple other games, but this was uh, from Warren. It was the Murder, She Wrote board game. What's this little note? It tells you it's missing the rivet. Oh. Uh, but a, a little, uh, here, we'll take that off. A little Murder, She Wrote board game from the, the classic, uh, well, it's classic now, but the, the, the classic television series that every old lady in the world watched religiously. Um, and a very, yeah, it's missing missing the rivet for the little thing. But it was all here, and it was, I think it was a buck. Um, I love the board for this. <laughs> it's just a neat little mystery game so it'll be another one that we eventually play on board at some point but for a dollar i was like it's murder she wrote and it's a dollar who cares it's a board game i don't own for a buck i'll buy it even though the closet upstairs that puppet of all lives is getting greatly full it's packed to the rim with board games ladies and gentlemen yeah, and when he gets full he's not buying anymore I'll find a new place. When to you put can't get the games. door to shut. I'll find a new place to put no, board games. Stacking them up in a corner is not finding a new place. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. That's gonna wrap it up for Carrie and I on this episode of Collection Expansion Extra. Oh my god, god, god. Uh, choking me a little bit. Make sure you check us out. Uh, go to youtubecom slash order if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet. youtubecom slash order Hit subscribe; it helps us out greatly. Also, check out youtubecom slash board to the show for all the shenanigans of our other series, Board, that we do in conjunction with Pixel-Dan.com, uh, as well as co-starring the one and only Pixel Dan uh, Erdley. Make sure you check us out on ToyWorldOrder.com where you can see all the great reviews and stuff as well as David Duvall's Toys and Collectibles podcast every week and Married to the Collection in the spring and summer for myself and Carrie as we recount our uh, our travels across the great state of Illinois and beyond looking for trinkets and stuff that we like to bring on for this show. So, gang, that'll do it for us. Uh, we'll be back real soon with an all-new episode of Collection Expansion Extravaganza. And until then, gang, uh, keep digging because you never know what you'll find that might burn your house down. <laughs> Ow! Take care! Oh god, it burned me!